Hey everybody, welcome back to Mike Oski's Kitchen. My name is Michael Olszewski and I'm the chef of this kitchen. And if you're tuning in, I sure hope you're trying to be the chef of yours or hope you are the chef of yours. We're making a, uh, and making and building an army of chefs of our own kitchen during this crazy time. Okay, let's get the elephant out of the room here. I did chrome the dome. It's a new look for me. And if you knew my family, my dad and my grandfathers, uh, actually what I just did was just advanced inevitability. So don't worry about it, I'm fine. I'm just going with a, with a more sheen close look. I love it. Uh, it's gonna be a lot easier to take care of for me and uh, won't have to get up early in the morning, do my hair and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, it's still me, I'm good. So let's have some fun. Guess what? Here we go, pierogi time. We're making pierogi in this video. There's gonna be three spots or three different um, uh, uh, clips of making pierogi. There's three separate steps that I see is the best way to do it. First step is you wanna make your filling, okay? And second step, we're gonna make our dough. And then third step, we're gonna put our filling into the dough, turn them things and squeeze them together and make our pierogi. So to, right now, let's go show you what I like to do traditionally making pierogi. I like to make two types of filling, okay? The first type of filling is a potato, cheese, and onion. Uh, and then the other one would be a potato and kraut. So those are my two favorite types of filling. That's what my family likes. Um, but you know, pierogi, you can put anything inside there. You can put beef, you can put, uh, you know, um, cottage cheese, farmer's cheese, all kinds of stuff. Prunes, forget about it. You can put anything in pierogi. But for my purposes uh, in making this and this video is I'm going to be strictly traditional the best I can by using um, five pounds of russet potatoes for this. An onion, what we're gonna, I'll show you what we're gonna do with the onion. A tablespoon of butter, some warm milk. You know what that's gonna be for mashing potatoes, right? I use some cream cheese. I usually use four ounces of cream cheese for these five pounds. And then I'm gonna do about a cup or a cup or so, a little, little bit more than a cup of, of a mild cheddar. And then we're gonna put that into potatoes. Uh, salt and salt and pepper, and of course some marjoram. I'll show you how much I put into that. And then for the potato and kraut, I have kraut. This is a 32 ounce jar of it. I'm gonna use half of it, about 16 ounces, 14 to 16 ounces of kraut. But you're gonna have to do something with the kraut because if you don't, you'll have a big sloppy mess. We're gonna go ahead and take half of this kraut out, put it into the um, uh, strainer, and then we're gonna let that strain out really, really, really good. We wanna get as much liquid off the kraut as we possibly can. Then we'll bring it back over, we'll chop it up a little bit more and make it a little bit more thinner and then we'll show you how you're gonna put this together. So right now, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and peel these potatoes and cube them, we're gonna boil them, okay? Eight to 10 minutes, 12 minutes on the boiling. I'm gonna dice this onion up and I'm gonna caramelize it, and then we're gonna go ahead and start making these fillings. So I'll be right back, I got some work to do. You know how to peel potatoes, you know how to cube potatoes, you know how to boil potatoes. Go ahead and start doing yours, I'll do mine, and I'll meet you back here just in a little bit. Okay, great, so all the hard work really is done for our, um, our filling. Uh, I've, I've um, cut and I peeled and I cubed these potatoes, five pounds, russets, they're really good, they're good to mash with. I'm gonna go ahead and boil these. Um, and then I've also chopped and diced up some onion. I did that one onion. I have a tablespoon of butter in there with that. So we're gonna go ahead and let that um, caramelize, so get ready. But before that, I like to add a little bit of salt to my potato water. It cooks nicely. And then we're gonna add just a little bit of salt to the onion and of course, Dun, 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 dun. pepper to the onions. And we're gonna go ahead and let these caramelize while the potatoes are cooking and boiling. And we should be ready to go by putting our fillings together. I'll be right back. I wanna show you one quick trick I'm gonna do with the um, sauerkraut. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these on a hot spot and I'll be right back. Okay, real quick, hey, thanks for coming back. Listen, I wanna show you something that's very important when you're using kraut for the, for the pierogi dough, or the pierogi filling, I'm sorry. Um, Kraut is very moist, has a lot of moisture, a lot of juice. If you keep that juice in and, and you keep too much of it fluid and you try to mix it with potatoes or whatever you try to gonna do, it's gonna be a big sloppy mess. So we want to get this kraut as dry as possible. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take half of that kraut out and put it into my strainer. And then we're gonna go ahead and let it strain. So about use about half, a little bit more, a little bit about half maybe, yeah, about half. So we want that to strain really, really well. As long as it takes, 15, 20 minutes, I don't care. You can press it down a little bit. You can push it down with a, um, you know, uh, a back of a glass. I'm not gonna use this because it has milk in it, but you can just keep pressing it down to get all that moisture off the kraut. Um, so we're just gonna let that sit there and then we're gonna be using it as we make our potatoes. But right now, we're just gonna let it sit and 
When I come back, we'll be ready to mash these potatoes up and start making our filling. See you right back real soon. Okay, welcome back. Hey, we are here. Let's go ahead and make these two fillings. Remember, I'm making two fillings. I'm making two types. First type is gonna be the potato, cheese, and onion, and the other one's gonna be a potato and kraut. But first thing we have to do is mash these potatoes. You don't wanna do the mashed potatoes that you do for dinner. You wanna keep them a little, a little bit more thick, if you know what I mean. So what I typically do is I put a um, four, um, uh, four ounces of cream cheese in my potato. Let me throw that in there. And then I add just a little bit of milk just to kind of bring it a little bit of milk, and then I'm gonna go ahead and go old school with a hand mixer. Who needs one of those tabletop ones? Here I go. Okay, now, since I've done that, I don't wanna go all the way with the hand mixer. So I have a little hand masher. If you don't have a hand masher, you can go ahead and do it the rest of the way with the hand mixer or the tabletop, it's fine. But I like to just kinda of go ahead and finish it off here. We don't want it really, you know, potatoes can get really soupy, it can get really thin, we don't want that. That's not gonna be a really good fix for our, our um, fillings. So you're just gonna go ahead and hand mash it a little bit, like I'm doing here, just finish it out, get some of those big clumps out of the way. And this is pretty much what you're gonna look at. Now, before we do any more, we're gonna add, of course, my favorite spice in the world, pepper. And I'm gonna go ahead and fold that in here in a minute. A little bit of salt's gonna go in also. Love pepper. And I kinda like salt. Adds a little, nice little flavor to it. One last thing, haha, <laughs> marjoram. Love marjoram that brings a sweetness of potatoes. So since we're gonna be using the same potatoes for both of the fillings, let's go ahead and take care of this potato base by itself. I'm gonna go ahead and continue to mash this. It won't take a second. That looks great. Now, what we're gonna do next, look at that. That's, well, let me show you better. That, my friend, is pierogi filling. Look at it, it's not even leaving a spoon. That's exactly what you want. You gotta shake it off. You want a nice thick potato. Now, what we're gonna do next, since we're using two different, um, two different um, uh, fillings, we're gonna separate and half this and do one half for the potato and cheese and onion and the other half is going to be for the sauerkraut and potato. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some of this. You know what, I got a bigger spoon right here. You can put about half in here, okay? That looks about half to me. Remember I talked about the cheese, okay? A cup of cheese, about eight ounces. You can go a little bit more, you can go a little bit less. I like to use the shredded cheddar. We're gonna drop that in. And the onions that we went ahead and caramelized, here they come. They're going in there too. Now, we just wanna go ahead and fold this up. We just wanna mix it in, get the cheese melted in there. I do the cheese one first because you want the cheese to melt inside the warm potatoes. You don't need the sauerkraut to melt, you follow me? So you wanna just keep mixing this up, get that all cheesied up. Keep on mixing. Just keep mixing so that cheese all, is all melted and integrated into the potato along with the onion and the pepper and the marjoram and the salt. Oh my, this is gonna be a good one. Mm, mm, mm. Look at that. Perfect. Now, since I've shaved my head, um, my hair doesn't catch the sweat anymore. So if I'm sweating, it's because I have no hair. It's a little ball humor for you. I'm starting to learn some of those jokes. Now let's take this filling and put it into a separate bowl itself. And I'll be right back and show you how to do the filling for the sauerkraut potato. Okay, great, so we're back. So we made our potato, cheese, and onion filling. Now let's do that second filling. Remember I talked about with the coleslaw. I went ahead and squeeze, 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 squeeze as much as moisture I could out of this. So you want it nice and dry. It's kind of flaky now. It's not as sticky. Perfect, okay? So what we want to do now, we want to go ahead and do the same process that we did with the um, the potato and cheese pro meat and go ahead and put those potatoes in here. We're gonna mix them together. 
Okay. Now we're gonna go ahead and drop the slaw or the slaw into that. Let's go ahead. Pepper. Come on, pepper. Make it warm. Make it spicy. Make it tasty. There's really no rhyme or reason how much pepper you want on your pierogies or how much pepper you want on anything. It's all up to you and how you like it. Let's add, let's add a little salt to this puppy. Perfect. Now, just like we did with the other filling, let's mix it in. Oh boy, does that look good. Again, only about 16 ounces. We don't want to overwhelm it, but we want to mix it well into the potatoes. So when you eat these pierogies, these, these potato um, and um, crop pierogies, you'll taste both potato and you'll, you'll taste the kraut along with it. And you know what? While we're here, let's add some margarine. Love it. Let's fold that back in. So there'll be multiple tastes there. Okay. There we go. Now, let's put it in our bowl. See how nice and sticky that is? Oh, it's perfect. It's turning out just the way I like it. You may have a different different approach, but the more stickier, the better, because, it, boy, when you scoop that tablespoon or so, a ball of the, the filling into the in, in, into the dough we're going to make here in a little bit, and it stays together, and you squeeze that thing together, oh, it's good. It's just good. All right. There we go. So there is our potato and kraut filling. In fact, hold on. These two are side by side. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cover them. I'm gonna put them in the refrigerator. I don't know, a couple hours overnight, you can do whatever you want. That even solidifies them a little bit, little bit more and easier to work with when you get to work with them, when you're gonna be putting them onto your, onto your, um, your pierogi dough. So right now, um, I'm gonna go ahead, cover these, put these in the refrigerator. And when I come back, we're gonna start making this dough. That's the next step of the process. I'll see you back here just in a little bit. Okay, everybody, thanks for coming back. Hey, we, like I said, we already made our fillings. We got our kraut and potato fillings, and we got our cheddar cheese and onion filling and potato. Um, I put them in the fridge for a little bit to thicken up a little bit better. I like it like that. So that's part one. So let's get these guys out of the way. Part two of making pierogi is the dough. I know everybody has problems with dough. I think I found a pretty good recipe that's fail-proof. So... I'm gonna show you how to make mine. I know there's tons of different dough recipes out there, thousands if not millions, but this is the way I make mine. So you give this a shot, you're not gonna, you're not gonna fail on this one. It's really, really, really simple. Simply what we're gonna use, we're gonna use some salt, 12 tablespoons of butter, 16 ounces of sour cream. Now remember, this is for about 70, 75 pierogi. Eight, or I'm sorry, four eggs, and then we're gonna use good old fashioned flour, and we're gonna use eight cups of flour. Um, and then that's it. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. First thing I'm gonna do is melt this butter down. We're gonna melt the butter down and we're gonna mix it with all the wet ingredients. And then we're gonna put it together in this wonderful big dough bowl with the flour. So I'm gonna go ahead and melt the butter down and I'll see you right back here. Okay, we're back. So what I did, I went ahead and um, melted my butter, 12 tablespoons of butter. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put my butter, my eggs, my sour cream and some salt into this bowl. I'm gonna mix it up. That's gonna be my, my, my wet mixture. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna take my uh, 16 ounces of sour cream. And then we're gonna take the butter, the melted butter. Get all that sour cream out of there. I'm gonna take the melted butter, put it in right with the sour cream. And then we're gonna go ahead and add four tablespoons of salt. We'll add the eggs here in a second. One. Two, I'm telling you this really works. Three, four, fantastic. Now, four eggs, one, two, I used to be a basketball player, not really. Wasn't well, tall enough. Three and four. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and mix all this together and make just a mixture. Let's have some fun, rock and roll. You can use a spoon or a fork or a whisker, whatever you want. But this is your wet ingredients that's gonna go into the, um, the flour. It's gonna look something like that, if you can see it. Mix it up really good, get everything um, 
blend it together and everything incorporated. That's it. Now, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna we're gonna put this with the flour. And I'm gonna show you how to make the dough. Be right back. Okay, let's go. Hey, it's a little play on words here. It's not go time. It's dough time. Simple, guys. This is what everybody gets nervous about making pierogi. How am I gonna get to get the dough right? It turned out it was a disaster. Well, very easy. I'd like to take my dough, eight cups of dough or eight cups of flour in here, and make a nice little hole in the middle of the dough. I'm gonna add just a little bit of this stuff to start with, and I'm gonna go ahead and fold it in. Just fold it in. Don't worry, we're gonna get our hands dirty here in a minute, but we wanna kinda of add this slowly and add a little bit more. Again, we're gonna fold it back in. It's already starting to thicken. Look, you're gonna make a little bit of a mess. Some dough's gonna fly out. It's just it's part of the process. I just kinda of fold it over. Boom, go long down the side, lift up and flip it over to the top and press down. You're gonna lose some dough, it's, or uh, some, some uh, flour because it's thin, it's loose and it's light. I'm gonna do the same thing again. Let's add some more of our wet mixture. Yeah, I'm adding just a little bit at a time. You wanna take your time with it. That dough is already starting to set up beautifully. We're gonna just flipping it over time and time again. Don't worry, we will clean up. Now you can use a stand mixer for this, um, or uh, one with a dough hook. I mean, those are right. Those are really nice. I'd use one in the past, but uh, I also like doing it with my hands as well. Kind of brings some of back those old-fashioned memories, I guess. All right, let's add a little bit more of our wet mixture. We're almost there, folks, to start using our hands. Everything's looking good. And make sure your hands are clean, because you're going to use your hands on there. And I just washed mine before we started this. And let's put our final bit of our wet mixture in here. And we'll do a final flip, and then we'll use our hands. You can almost tell when it's time to use your hands because the spoon gets hard to move in the dough. And we're gonna knead it together and squeeze all that stuff together here just in a second. All right, that looks good enough, I think. Let's go ahead and wipe it off here. Now, use your hands. You're gonna get your hands dirty, but make sure they're clean first. So we're gonna go ahead and flip this dough around and I'll be right back. Okay, great, so the dough has been kind of mixed up and set up and what I'm gonna do is gonna put it on this I put a little bit of flour on this cutting board. So I'm just gonna kind of knead it a little bit and just kind of move it over. Just make sure she's all set. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a nice ball with it. Okay. Should be good to go. And I'm gonna flatten it out a little bit. I'm gonna cut it in four pieces. I'll tell you why I'm doing that in a little bit. It's gonna be a good dough, it's cutting nice and smooth. At this point right now, I got four pieces of dough, and what I'm gonna do is keep them covered for about a half hour with a towel. And then that's, that'll let the dough set up, and we'll be ready to start making some pierogi. So I'll see you back here in just a little bit, and we're gonna make some pierogi next. Okay, everybody, welcome back. Hey, it's time to make the pierogi. The dough's been sitting out for about a half hour, a little longer, I've had it covered. It's ready to go. This is the fun part of making a pierogi, is actually put, rolling out the dough, putting in the uh, pierogi filling, and we're gonna go ahead and close them up. I'm gonna show you, it's fun, it can be messy, don't get frustrated. It's pretty easy to do once you get a hang of it. So for right now, uh, make sure you stay hydrated, like I am, and let's make some pierogi, okay? So I'm gonna pull one of the pieces of dough out, I'm gonna make a few of them, so I got a bunch to make myself. So I'm gonna show you how to make maybe four or five or six of them, and then we're gonna go from there. So. Let's get to working, hang on. Here we go. So what I like to do, a nice clean surface right here. Take some of my flour, and let's go ahead and move this flour around here. We just wanna flour the area. Very nice like that. Nothing major, nothing, a whole lot of flour, but get a nice little base to it. 
can see right there. Now let's pull out one of these, one of these uh, quarters here. There it is. You like it? There it is. Now we want to take a rolling pin, and I'm going to put some flour in my hand here, and let's put it on a rolling pin here. Now what we want to do is just start rolling out this dough. Not a problem. Just pull it out. It's going to take a little bit. Yeah, that's why I say you got to stay hydrated because this takes a little bit of work to do. Look how nice it's coming out. We want to get this thing to about, oh, eighth of an inch or so. But I'm going to show you a little trick. Because here's sometimes a problem happens when you're making pierogi. The dough can kind of shrink a little bit on you. But I'm going to show you a trick to prevent that from happening. Okay, so we got a nice little spread of dough here. I think that's a good place to start. Let's just roll it out. Looking good. I like to loosen it a little bit on the plate, on the, um, on the counter, so it stays nice and loose. Now, a little bit more. Looking good, okay. So there's your dough. Now, I take about a three inch cup three inch in diameter, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and put one here, and I squeeze it and turn it. Put one right next to it, squeeze it, and twist it. Now let's put one right next to that one. Squeeze it and twist it. Beautiful. So let's make a couple more here. One, and let's put one right there. Let's leave a little room. Don't put them too far in both. There's one, two, three, four, five. Ah, let's put six down. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and move this dough out of the way just to show you. There is our circles. One just got stuck there, but that's okay. Okay. I'm going to put this over here. Now you got six pierogi circles. Now what I like to do to make it more simple and give you a little bit more room. I like to go ahead and roll it just a little bit more. Just right over top of it. Nothing too heavy, nothing too hard. Just right over top of it. Just tap it a little bit. Now here we go. I'm gonna take some of my potato and cheese. Put it right in the middle there. Looks good there. And I'm, I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna take the pierogi the dough, and I'm going to put it over the top. I'm going to pick it up and start pinching the edges. Sometimes the filling does fill out from the inside. It's okay, squeeze it out, but you want those edges to be nice and closed. Just like that. Now, I like to take a fork at this point and just go ahead and finish them out. The fork helps seal the edges. And there, my friends, is a potato and cheese pierogi. You see that? Potato and cheese pierogi, fantastic. Let's do another one. Make sure you put a little bit more. Now see how these kind of shrink a little bit? It's okay. Just take, take your rolling pin, go one, two, one, two, and then go top. One, two, one, two. Spread them out a little bit, it's okay. You have full control of it. Let's do potato and cheese again. I put about a tea, tea, uh, a little bit less than a tablespoon or so. That looks pretty good. That might squeeze out a little bit, but that's okay. So I take my, my, my dough and I kind of tuck this in, reach it over, finish the top, and I just kind of take the edges and get that rest of the stuff that squeezes out. Now let's go ahead and close it. So you want to squeeze, it, squeeze the edges. It's okay if that potato and cheese comes out. It's okay. Now, let's go ahead and take our fork and let's close this puppy up. And by kind of do both sides, that helps close everything up. I like to take my finger and just finish the edges and just close it up again. Make sure all both ends seal, seal in place. And there is another progy. These are pretty big ones. They look great. How about we do one more? Sounds good. Let me wash my hands. 
All right, let's take one of our discs, pierogi discs. We're gonna do this very easily. Remember, not too many times. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. That helps flatten it out a little bit more. Hey, let's take some of this potato and, and um, kraut. Let's put that right in the middle. Same thing. Pick it, off the, pick it off the counter here. And if they start to stick to the counter, that means you need a little bit more um, flour on the counter so it doesn't stick as much. So then close that, take our fork. Let's go ahead and close them up. And we will need to put some more flour down here as we continue on for the rest of these pierogies. And there, my friends, is a potato and kraut. So, there you go. Pretty easy to do pierogies. You wanna do one more? Can I hear you say? Oh my gosh, I hear people say yes. So we'll do one more. And this will be it. Because I got some, I got some work to do. I got a bunch of these to do. So we're gonna do one more pierogi. We'll do one more potato and kraut, okay? So here we go. Let's take a little bit more of our, of our um, flour. Go ahead, put it on there. And now let's take this thing. Remember, spread them out a little bit. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. See, it spreads it out a little bit more. Gives you some more room to work with. Again, potato and kraut. We put about a tablespoon on there. Eh, put a little bit more on there. Get from the side here. And then we're going to go ahead and just close it. Just like that. Okay, and we're gonna fork it down. Fork, 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 fork. And we flip it over. And we will do the other side. Now I do a final touch on this, squeeze the edges. Perfect. One, two potato and kraut. There's one, two potato and cheese. Fantastic looking pierogies, folks. I'm gonna tell you what. Next thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you, gonna go over to the hot spot, I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna boil them, and then I'm gonna take them out, and I'm gonna let them cool off, and then I'm gonna fry them, and then I'm gonna eat them. Wait till you see what happens. I'll see you over at the hot spot. Okay, so here we are. Let me show you how to make these pierogies. I got a pot, pot of boiling water going on right now. So first thing I wanna do is um, just do one last check, make everything is sealed, and we're gonna boil five of these at a time. Just drop them right into the water. Two, make sure they're all set. This one looks good. Three, make sure it's all set, make sure it's everything's sealed. So all I do is just one last seal check. And these are gonna be um, ready here in about two to three minutes. Once they boil, they're gonna bubble up to the top. That's when you wanna go ahead and use a slotted spoon, take them out, we're gonna put them right back on this pan again that I had them on, and let them dry a little bit, let them cool off, and then we're gonna fry them up, and then we're gonna eat them. So I'll see you right back here once you start boiling. Okay, these pierogi have been in this pot here right now for about three to five minutes boiling along. They're starting to float, this is what we want. Now let's go ahead and gently, gently, gently take these out one at a time with a slotted spoon. Let the water stay in there. It's gonna go ahead and put these things right on this same pan that I took them out off of. There's three and there's four. And here's the final one that was floating in there with the other ones. Now at this point right now, we're just gonna go ahead and let these dry, let these cool a little bit. And then I'm gonna show you how we fry them up and how, well, you know how to eat them, but I'm gonna show you how to fry them up with some wonderful butter and onions. I'll be right back. Okay, so let's make our pierogi now. Look how nice they look. They're nice and cooled off and dried. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt, or I'm sorry, a little pepper into my onions. What you wanna do with your onions, I use about a tablespoon uh, of uh, butter and I'm just gonna go ahead and caramelize these puppies up. Just gonna let them cook on medium or so, okay? Keep mixing them around, so we'll leave that alone. Now, let's go with the pierogi. This is some butter in here. We're gonna go ahead and start cooking these pierogies up. And we're gonna brown them on both sides. And we're gonna brown them for a few minutes on either side and get them nice and, um, nice and brown. Keep mixing these onions up. They start to caramelize too quick. Turn your heat down. I got mine on just about low right now. So we just want them to be nice and caramelized. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. We're gonna marry these two together. 
I'll be right back. I'm going to show you exactly how they look when we flip them over. We flip them over one more time, and that's it. And then we're going to go ahead and serve them. So they're right back. All right, so the pierogi's about ready to flip. I like to add, I've already added a little bit, but I like to add a little bit more pepper to the pierogi and a little bit of salt. We're going to go ahead and flip these over. Oh, look how beautiful. That's gorgeous. And we're going to let this other side, that one got a little bit done, but that's okay. We're going to get this other side brown, the same side as this, and then we're going to go ahead and take them off, and we're going to combine these onions with them. So be, once we get done with that, we're going to take them off and put them right on this plate. And enjoy some pierogi. Be right back. These pierogies are already ready to go. Let's go ahead and take them up, make sure they're, they're nice and brown on both sides. And put them right on this plate. Come here, little guy. Come here. Wow, we'll get him later. There we go. Now, last thing to add to the top of it, I'm going to take some of these caramelized onions and put them right over top. Just like that. I like my progies a little bit more crispy on the outside. You don't have to fry them as heavy, uh, but that's the way I like them. But you can do them any way you want. There's a pierogi. Now let's go ahead and try these puppies. Well, here we are. We've arrived. It's pierogi time. It's been a long journey. I appreciate you hanging in there and watching this and kind of going through this with me. But you know what? These turned out, I think, perfect. At least they looked like it. I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot here. I like to hold my pierogies in my hand. Oh, see a little bunny? This got salt in it. You can figure it's around Easter, right? A little salt on top. Oh, my. Mm. Look at that. Look at this wonderful, wonderful filling in that. We had a little bit of salt. These turned out awesome. Yep. Hey. Man, it's so good. Oh, I'm so happy. Listen, pierogies, take some steps. Just follow it. It's super easy to do, guys. Seriously. Just remember, there's three steps. You got to make your filling, you got to make your dough, and then you got to make your pierogi. You fry them up, put some put some sautéed on, onions on there, some caramelized onions, a little bit of salt. You can add some sour cream, whatever you want to do. But these pierogies turned out fantastic. Thank you for watching. I'm glad you're here. If you haven't subscribed, please do. There's more to come. But I'm telling you what, I'm going to go ahead and finish these rest of these pierogies. While I'm gone, take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Watch over each other. Bring people back around the table. Enjoy your pierogies. God bless you. And in my Polish way, Nastrovia.